Oh, welcome back to Jesse on Fire. If you've never been to my channel, you're not going to realize that somebody got an upgrade. Look at my new setup, son. Now the setup matches my face and my haircut. Fresh to death, son. Fresh to death. Always was the best MMA analyst. Now maybe has an even better setup than anyone else. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't even know what it's going to look like yet. I'm looking at a green screen. So we'll see. We'll see how good it looks. But either way, I'll still be the best looking MMA analyst and certainly the fastest talking, most intelligent, best points on a just repeat. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Good point, good point, good point. Wow. Analysis just coming out of his ears. <laughs> That's how we're going to intro this, this video. Just utter nonsense, okay? So for those of you who are curious what we're actually going to talk about, we're going to talk about two things, okay? One being so stupid that it's actually shocking. The other being fighters getting paid what they're worth as far as market value is concerned, but with a caveat being how UFC is controlling what their market value is, okay? So that's something I left out yesterday. I was talking about what Dana's positioning is as it relates to the UFC and how he owes the shareholders generating as much revenue as possible and he has these guys locked into these contracts. He won't give them good... Actually, mm -mm, I'm jumping ahead. The other thing that we're going to talk about is MMA rankings on MMA junkies because what the f stupid, okay, stupid, unless someone knows something I don't know, which is that Bellator owns MMA junkies. If that's not the case or, or Bellator is not paying MMA junkies to rank their guys, you know, like in the top five, then I mean, Ryan Bader, the third best light heavyweight in the world. I'm sorry. Are you joking? And then if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> let me just double check this before I just put this on blast because I'm pretty sure that, oh, yep, Phil Davis, number four. So just so we're clear, MMA Junkies has Phil Davis ranked above Jan Blackovitz, Corey, Corey Anderson, Glover Teixeira, Anderson, <laughs> Anthony Smith, Alexander Gustafson, Vulcan Oldsdemir, Tiago Santos, who would decapitate that dude and Ryan Bader in the same night. I mean, it's just, that is just so stupid, okay? It's so dumb. I'm not going to ruin it for the rest of them because there are some other rankings that are so, so dumb. But let's first talk about what fighters are worth. Actually, before we do that, how about you subscribe to the channel? If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, okay? I'm talking cocky. I've got a new setup. That's awesome. But in reality, I love my subscribers and they all know that. I fucking love you guys. You guys are my favorite people. Look at this channel is going to blow up. Everybody knows it. Okay. I know it. You know it. It's just going to happen, right? My career is going to go somewhere from there, but I'm not thinking that far ahead. What I'm thinking about is the fact that the people who subscribe to my channel when it was sub 5,000 subscribers, you think I'm not going to remember you guys? The ones who comment on my videos? Okay. I will always remember you guys. 100%. That is a fact. You guys are my early adopters. I fucking love you guys. I will be incredibly loyal to you guys. Okay. When I really blow up and it's time for me to start handing tickets out, sending out free swag, and I've got just dough coming out of my ears, although I kind of already have dough coming out of my ears, maybe, or maybe I don't, or maybe I do, maybe I don't, maybe I do, maybe I don't, maybe I do. Either way, I'm going to take care of you guys. So if you could like the videos, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell, I'll love you forever. Okay, so first now let's talk about fighters getting paid what they're worth and how UFC is controlling the market value, okay? So this is how capitalism works, okay? So if you are an independent contractor, which is what Dana has, has said, you know, that's what his contention is, is that fighters are independent contractors. I will push back on that because yes, they are independent contractors in that they don't have to fight and they are not, ten they are not employees of the UFC. However, they cannot fight anywhere else. So they are locked in, okay? They're UFC fighters, period, point blank, period. You're talking about tax structure when you call them independent contractors. But their ability to negotiate is very limited and that is due to Dana and the Fertitas and their business model, okay? They set up an incredibly intelligent business model, which is why the company is worth four and a half billion dollars, okay? Here is the deal. Anyone, any, any, any competing organization that would be able to drive up market value on the big stars, UFC bought them, swallowed them up. Okay. You think UFC bought Strike Force because Strike Force had such incredible fighters? I mean, they had good, they had good fighters. 
Or do you think the strike force was gaining steam and they represented a threat in terms of market value for the fighters? Okay, Elite XC, same thing. Pride, the real big one, you know? Pride could offer big money to their fighters. So they're not only are they gonna lose fighters, they're gonna have to pay their fighters more to keep them. So they swallow that organization up and then boom, they control the market. They control the market with the fighters because if they don't have that, right? And there actually is another competing organization, guess how much more the fighters are gonna start getting paid, right? Guess how much the fighters are gonna start getting paid. Here's the deal too though. You think that it's just a matter of money? Like you think that some billionaire could just come in and be like, hey, I, I love the sport, you know, like, hey, I'm, uh, I mean, just pick someone who has, you know, $20 billion. So they can just throw, like money is a non-issue. They could do it as a pet project, right? They're going to invest $2 billion into starting a new organization, okay? That won't matter. It won't matter. They, they, there, there's no amount of money that can, that can remove UFC out of their position in the business world now or in the, in the business sector that they're in because they create the stars, but by creating the stars, they lock them in. They don't, they do not create stars. They do not have locked in. Did you hear what Jorge Masvidal was talking about? He said they renegotiate after every fight and every time they lock them into more fights. Okay. And that is because the UFC is protecting their investments, right? If they're going to spend a bunch of money marketing a guy, if they're going to pump him up, they're going to give him the right fights. They're going to put him in front of, so they're going to make sure that if he becomes a star, if he wins and becomes a star, that he's theirs, right? So they are doing what is intelligent for the company. They're not going to promote a guy. They're not going to make him a huge star unless they know he's their star, right? So they are looking after the company. It's an incredibly smart business model. And simultaneously, yes, the fighters do kind of get fucked over in a way. Although, if you look at it the other way, the fighters would never get the platform if it wasn't for the UFC, okay? Now, if I'm in business and I'm the UFC, what, like my number one job is not paying fighters as much as possible, right? Is that, is that my job? I mean, I know I went over this yesterday with like Dana White's job is, is, you know, is generating shareholder value, but like, I don't think anyone's stupid enough to think that their job is to get, is to pay fighters as much as possible, right? Like, look at where the, the sport was 25 years ago. That's not a long time, man. There was, you know, 25 years ago, there were a lot of guys making millions of dollars in, in professional sports. In UFC, you made 100, maybe I think the first one was maybe like $50,000, maybe 100, if you won the entire tournament. If you lost, you just got your teeth kicked in and you went home. Okay, so Dana created, Dana and the first has created the sport from nothing. So any amount of money that you're getting paid is due to the UFC's efforts, right? And think about it like this. So let's say that like Cron Gracie got into a contract negotiation, right? He or into a contract dispute. Let's get, let's say Cron Gracie became a star and then he got into a dispute with the UFC. And he was brought into the netherworld with 1990 whatever, 1998 Hoist Gracie. And I went there and I was like, listen to this Hoist. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. The UFC just offered Kron $360,000 to fight every time he fights, win or lose. And Royce Gracie went, wow, amazing. Wow, the Gracie family must have really killed it. And I'm like, no, 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 he's not going to take it. He's actually going to say that he wants, he wants 360 and a piece of the pay-per-view and he wants a piece of the Reebok deal. So he wants to make sure that he gets at least $500,000 a fight. And if he doesn't get that, he said he's not going to fight. Royce Gracie's like, no, that's not true. Cron? No, it's true. <laughs> no, it's not true. No, it's true. I'm holding out. I want 500,000. And then Hoist Gracie would choke him to death, okay? Because he'd be like, are you out of your, are you out of your fucking mind? $360,000 to fight every single time? Like to the people who started the sport, the money these guys are making would be bananas. Unthinkable, okay? But this is human nature, okay? Everybody's got their eyes on what the other guys got, right? Like, so now... Being a professional fighter is a sport. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a real profession. They're looking at boxing and they're going, wow, this guy made 30 million. They're comparing themselves to this guy, okay? Guess what? Like I said yesterday, that shit has nothing to do with you, okay? Here's why guys can make that money in boxing is because a promoter is competing against another promoter to get the boxer to fight under their banner, right? So you actually do have competing parties that are trying to get the boxer to fight under their banner, right? And if you, you know, if a boxer already has a big name, then 
you know, they have to sign to a huge amount of money for them to fight under that banner because what are they bringing to the table? Okay, no one gives a shit about whether the fighter is fighting under fucking Golden Boy or whatever, fucking Mayweather Productions. This makes no difference, okay? That's, it, they are one-off fights, okay? So they've created themselves and then the promoters have to compete, okay? If there was another UFC, so if there's UFC 1 and fucking, and, you know, FFC, right? Then they have to compete against each other for all these fighters. But here's the thing. So like I said, if there was another guy who just came in, he's like, I'm going to invest $2 billion and build another fight organization. Irrelevant. Fucking irrelevant. They would have to build them from scratch. Okay. They would literally, they would never get a UFC fighter. Never. They would never get a star from the UFC ever. Okay. Ever. Because the only way that could happen is if a UFC fighter who was a huge star had a very slim number of fights left on their deal and UFC would, wouldn't give them a fight until they re-signed them to a longer deal. Or if they weren't going to sign for a longer deal, they'd put them on a fucking undercard, okay? Like, they are not going to create value for a fighter if they are in fear of losing that fighter. They're protecting their investment. These fighters are an investment. They come up through the Ultimate Fighter show. I mean, dude, it's, just, it's common sense. They have taken away the, the competition that exists over here, which is what would drive up prices and would pay would pay fighters more. They've literally swallowed up the competition, okay? Straight up. Now, I was listening to George Mossman, I'll talk about this, and how every time he wants to fight, they sign him and they lock him in for, for more fights. You know, I feel bad for him, honestly. He's like, and he's like, why are they doing this? They're, they're, they're putting, he said exactly what I said. He's like, they're putting me in a position where the only option I have is to not fight, and I love to fight. You know, listen, like I'm talking from the business perspective, but fuck that, man. Like I, I just, but again, I, I'm i torn on Jorge because I fucking love the guy. I genuinely do. But I believe he'll win. I believe he'll win. Like I think he's on this like destiny mission. If he wins, then Jorge, you get a piece of the pay-per-view. Like take the chance, man. Just go get that money. Like you're going to win. But yeah. I mean, end of story. I mean, that's that's the thing. So, like, people get paid their market value, but UFC has controlled what their market value is. I mean, it's that simple. So, it's not it's not like an open market, you know, because, yeah, sure, if there was another organization and they thought they were going to sell 700,000 pay-per-views with John Jones on the top of it with a really limited undercard that didn't cost very much money to put on, then, yeah, he would be worth more money, you know, and they would have to go back and forth on it. Here's the thing. You want to know how there's you want to know how you can tell there's not that much profit in these organizations or I'm sorry in these events. Look at the undercard for the Connor and Cowboy fight, okay? There was nobody on that undercard. I'm talking like nobody. There was nobody getting paid. Nobody, okay? So, what that told me is that dude, they really do have to limit their costs on these things, right? They I mean, I mean, unless they really were just being super greedy and they're like, okay, let's milk every dollar out of this. We know we're going to sell a certain number of pay-per-views with Connor on anyway. Why waste any other fighters? That's possible, I guess. That's actually very possible. But anyway, I mean, listen, that's, that's probably enough on that. But people can't get their market value because there is no competition. Period, point blank, period. That is what it is. But I say this with the utmost respect for the UFC in terms of their business because, again... Go back in time. What were these guys getting paid then? Nothing. They were getting paid nothing to get their teeth knocked out unless they won the tournament. And then the, the winner of the tournament... Dude, you want to go through what people got paid uh, last on Saturday? Okay, there were guys making 100 grand that are that I, I literally didn't know who they were. There were people that get, made $90,000. I was like, I literally do not know who this person is. And they're making $100,000. Okay, so like... Dude, they built the sport, man. They built the sport. A person like that? So a person I do not know who made $90,000 for that fight. They get three fights in a year. The UFC is is mandated to offer three fights a year. So $90,000? What's that look like? What's that look like? $270,000? I mean, dude, is that bad money for an unknown fighter in the UFC? $300,000 a year? It's pretty fucking good, right? So... You know, and if you're if you're Jorge Masvidal and you fight three times and you're and listen, and now your deal is locked in. So let's say his deal guarantees him four hundred thousand dollars a year, or I'm sorry, four hundred thousand dollars a fight. Dude, you fight three times, you're making a million two a year, right? 
Like, dude, I mean, I get it. You you want to get paid more, but like, dude, that's a lot of dough. And you're going to get a lot more if you win, dude. You're going to win and you're going to get a lot more. Jorge's worth more. It's a shit situation. But fuck, man, there's no crowds right now. It's a bad time to be asking for more money. Anyway, all right. So now let's talk about the fucking MMA rankings on MMA Junkies. Dude, are you, you have to be fucking kidding me. You have to be fucking kidding me, dude. You have to be fucking kidding me. Okay. Okay, here we go. Light heavyweight. John Jones, number one. Dominic Reyes, number two. Totally legit. Ryan Bader, number three. <laughs> okay. Ryan Bader has a long win streak against tomato cans. Okay? He's beaten no one. Right? He's literally, he's beaten no one. So, yeah. He, I mean, he looks he looks good. And I know Ryan Bader's a good buddy of one of my buddies. But, he, he, I mean, I'm not saying, that, I'm not even saying that he wouldn't win against these guys. You just can't fucking rank him there. Because he's fighting nobodies. Okay? Phil Davis. <laughs> Dude, that's a known entity, man. He is not going to... The idea that fucking Phil Davis would beat Tiago Santos is fucking laughable, dude. Jan Blakovich would annihilate him, dude. Jan Blakovich would fucking annihilate him. How is Phil Davis going to win that fight? How is Phil Davis going to win that fight? Riddle me that, dude. You, you guys tell me how he's going to win. Any of these guys would fucking run through those guys. But here, let's uh, let's look at this other one, okay? So how about middleweight? Because I love this. I love this, okay? You go, <laughs> where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There was someone that was so stupid. That was so, so, so. Oh, there it is. Gerard Musasi is the fucking, it goes Israel Alessania, Paulo Costa, Robert Whitaker, Jared Cannonier, Yoel Romero, Jack Hermanson, totally legit, and then do 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 Gerard Musasi. Gerard Musasi is is in the middle of that. In front of Derek Brunson, fucking Darren Till, Ronaldo Souza, Jacare is he's above Jacare. He's above I mean Chris Weidman, whatever, but he's above Kelvin Gastelum. You're telling me that fucking that that Gerard Musasi is gonna beat Kelvin Gastelum, fucking I mean, it's just ridiculous. Like the only way they could justify this is if is if Bellator fucking owns the company. And then welterweight, I think. Wait, that's not the right one. Here we go. Welterweight. There's one that's so I can't remember exactly which one. There's one that's so fucking stupid. That I just, oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is the stupidest one of all of them. The stupidest fucking shit I've ever seen. Okay. So here's what we got. Kamaru Usman number one, legit. Colby Covington number two. Legit. Jorge Masvidal, number three. Legit. And then, obviously, you know, I would certainly argue that Gilbert Burns could be in anywhere. You know, Tyron Woodley, of course, is, is going to be right there, right? Oh, wait a second. Number four is Douglas Lima. Douglas Lima is number four over Gilbert Burns, over Tyron Woodley, over Stephen Thompson. And then, before you even get to fucking Leon Edwards, by the way, they have Stephen Thompson ranked above Leon Edwards. How would you have fucking Wonder Boy above Leon Edwards right now, you fucking morons? He's won eight in a row. Like, it's, it's, uh, who is doing these rankings, dude? I'm telling you, hey, MMA junkies, do you guys want help? Because, I mean, I'm not trying to be a dick, but I'm just saying, like, if you put me on, I'll, uh, first of all, I'll fix your fucking rankings, and then you can have me on your channel. You can have me, like, you know, pumping the brand because... Good Lord. But yeah, so, um, I mean, I just, I, I just don't understand how, how you can have Bellator fighters on the, on the MMA junkies rankings at all. I just, I do not understand it at all. It's not pride. Okay. They are not pride. They are the B league period. So with that, I'm going to sign off right now. And as I just said that, fuck, man. Now I'm just, I'm making enemies with the Bellator guys. And I didn't mean to do that because there are a lot of guys that are fucking badasses over there. But it's just, it is what it is, man. So if you like the channel, subscribe, ring the bell, tell all your friends. And if you don't like what I said, if you're from Bellator, you don't like what I fucking said, tell me about it in the comments. I dare you. Go ahead. Because now you're in my world. You're on the mic, son. Go ahead, comment. See if I won't fucking blow you up in one of my videos. See if I won't. See if I'm scared. What, you think I never throw these hands? You think I've never fucking thrown these hands? Shit.
Anyway, so subscribe to the channel, ring the bell. Let's go. Love you guys. All my early adopters. Peace.